So what you really want to know is, does my penis have a comb over? Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back folks, great to see you. So today's video is a lower surgery topic and one of the common questions I'm asked is about laser hair removal before the first stage of phalloplasty. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the hair removal that I had. I'm gonna talk about whether it was successful and also talk about some things I might have done differently. But before we get stuck in, for anybody who might be new, a very, very big welcome. My name is Finn and on this channel, I share my life in recovery as a transgender gay man. And so here you will find lots of really raw, honest, sometimes amusing, first-hand accounts and practical advice on topics of gender transition, mental health and personal development. So if that's something you'd like to see, please do consider subscribing to my channel because it really, really does help. And when you do, don't forget to tick the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my uploads. Right, let's talk about hair removal. So why do we need hair removal when it comes to phalloplasty? Well, phalloplasty requires using a skin graft to create the penis. And with the type of phalloplasty I had using the arm, radial, forearm, free flap phalloplasty, some skin is taken from your forearm. And so you need hair removal prior to phalloplasty for two main reasons. Number one, to create a penis using the skin from your forearm, two pieces are taken. A piece is taken along the top of your forearm and another piece is taken from the underneath of your forearm. These two pieces are then rolled together. The underneath piece is rolled into one tube and that becomes your urethra. The top layer is rolled around the outside of that to form your phallus. With me, it is really especially important that the underneath of your arm is as hair free as possible prior to the surgery because in creating the urethral tube from this piece of skin, if hair regrows in the urethral tube, you risk infection, you risk scarring, you risk having urethral strictures and fissures, which will then need to be fixed. So all surgeons will have a look at the underneath part of your arm. And if it is significantly hairy, they will suggest having hair removal. And reason number two, when your penis is created from the skin on your arm graft, that creates your penis. So if your arm is hairy, your penis will be too. And if you're wondering if my penis has a comb over, we'll get to that shortly. So these are the two main reasons why we have hair removal prior to lower surgery, to make sure that the underneath of the arm that will create the urethral tube is as hair free as possible, and to make sure that the outside skin that creates the penis itself is as hair free as possible so you don't have a hairy penis. Now there are two main types of hair removal and that's electrolysis and laser hair removal. Now which one you have will largely depend on your skin type and your skin colouring and your hair colouring. Now when it comes to the differences between the two, on the whole laser tends to be better for people who have very dark hair and very light skin, whereas electrolysis works on a variety of different skin and hair types and is said to be more flexible in that way. But that being said, there are advancements being made all the time, especially with laser hair removal. So I'd really suggest that you do your own research around the two and see which one might be the best for you but always, always make sure to talk to your surgeon or your consultant, because of course, having either of these procedures will affect the quality of your skin. So it's really important to get advice from your person who will be, have, be doing your surgery, and also to talk to whoever will be doing your electrolysis or laser hair removal. So I personally had laser hair removal, and the reason I had that was because that was all that was offered to me. When I went through my gender clinic, the procedure then was to offer six sessions of laser hair removal. And this is the thing, often our choices are limited depending on what our insurance or a healthcare provider allows us to have. So if you're not paying this out of your own pocket, then you might be limited for choice, as I was. But I was told that because my hair was quite dark and my skin I was quite tanned, but I was told if I lost some of that tan, that laser would work for me. One of the common questions about laser hair removal is, is it painful? Painful doesn't even come close. 
honestly, I found laser removal so incredibly painful. I've had tattoos done, I had this tattoo done, and it's like having a tattoo done turned up a million percent. <laughs> it is really sharp, burning, intense pain. But the good thing is, if you can grit your teeth and bear through it, it's over really quick. Sessions can be just about 10 minutes if you're able to grit your teeth and bear through it. After laser hair removal, you are left with a very, very, very pink arm and it can be quite raised. You can get blisters as well. I found mine would be raised and lots of little pink dots, but over like two or three days, it did settle down and it was fine. I had six sessions of laser hair removal on my arm in total before I then got a date from my first stage surgery and my surgeon suggested giving my skin at least a month to six weeks between my last session so that the skin would kind of settle back down. So I had six sessions of laser hair removal in total. So the question is, were six sessions enough? Well, those sessions did minimize the hair, absolutely it did. But after stage one, gradually as time has progressed, more and more hair has appeared on my penis. So yes, Finn Jr. does have a comb over. So it appears that six sessions was not enough for me because now the hair has grown significantly. It isn't as hairy as my arm. So the laser hair removal clearly did minimize the hair, but what has regrown is still very significant. So what would be my advice to others who are just starting their lower surgery journey? If I could go back and do things differently, I would start hair removal at least a year in advance. If you're a very hairy guy like I am, it's going to take more than six sessions to really reduce that hair. If I could have had a good year's worth of sessions, then perhaps my penis wouldn't be hairy at all, so I would start way in advance to give myself the much, as much chance as possible of not having a hairy penis. But when it comes to thinking about hair removal, it isn't just the penis we need to consider. There is other hair growth to consider, which I'd really completely not even thought about before I had my surgery, and I wish somebody had told me. And to explain, when we have lower surgery, our genitals are reconfigured, so the labia become our testicles and our scrotum. And because all of that area is hairy, once that becomes our scrotum, we then in turn have hairy balls. Basically, my entire genital area is in need of some serious manscaping. So yes, with the laser hair not being hugely successful with me and with not even considering having laser hair removal on my genital area, I now have a very hairy penis and very hairy balls. So what would I do differently? Well, with the benefit of hindsight, I would have taken a year out to get rid of as much hair on the arm as possible and also to have laser hair removal on my genital area underneath the mons so as much of that was as hair free as possible. Now you could of course choose to have hair removal afterwards if it was just purely cosmetic. If you were somebody that had a very hairy underneath of your forearm and you had to have that done to make sure it was hair free for the urethral hookup, then the option could be to just concentrate on that area solely before having lower surgery. And then after your procedures are all finished, you can then go ahead and have your genital area hair removal. And it'd be much easier in a lot of ways because then you could see exactly where needed to have work to have the hair removed. So am I going to go ahead with more hair removal? Nobody is going anywhere near Finn Jr. with a laser. I have considered this myself, to be honest. I have thought about finding somebody who's quite sensitive in terms of working with trans people who could then help me to minimize the hair growth. But I really don't like the idea, considering how painful hair removal was, of having that on my genital area, especially now that sensation is returning. So for me personally, just manscaping with my beard trimmer to get rid of all the hair. I mean, I do that once a week and it really isn't an issue. So for me, I'm probably gonna stick with where I'm at because hairy or not, my penis is beautiful. So that's my experience of hair removal. 
and my tips and advice for other people who are just starting out their journey. I really hope this was helpful. Please do let me know. And if you have any comments or questions on this topic or anything else, you can leave me a message in the comment section below or you can contact me over on my website. The links are in the description. If you want to see any more videos about phalloplasty, preparing for phalloplasty, going through phalloplasty and recovering, I shall link you to a playlist here. Thanks for watching folks. Take care of yourselves. See you next week. Keep on keeping on.